the cost of debt is simply the yield to maturity on the current debt the company owes. Now, yield to maturity is just a very fancy way of saying pretty much the interest rate. And for our work, we're gonna say it's the exact same, just because the differences are so small, it's not really worth diving into. And it takes a long time to explain. If you truly wanna know, you can Google it. I'm just gonna tell you that the interest rate is a lot easier way to think about it. So the interest rate on your debt is really the cost of debt. Boom, that was so much easier than cost of equity, right? Okay, but figuring out the cost of equity and the cost of debt are once again only about half the equation. You see, WAC starts with the word weighted, which means that for every company, there's a certain weight between equity and debt. See, some companies are gonna have 90% equity, other companies are gonna have 50% equity. That's why you have to look at each one underneath the total financing of the company. So let's dive into our example one more time and really hammer this out. Okay, do you remember our entertainment company that we did the cost of equity for just a few minutes ago? You know, it had $4 million in debt and had $5 million in equity. And well, I didn't add this part, but we're gonna add it right now. We're gonna say that last year it paid $400,000 in interest. So let's figure out the cost of debt first. Well, the cost of debt is really just the interest rate. The easiest way to find the interest rate is divide the amount paid in interest by the total debt. So for this situation, it'd be $400,000 divided by 4 million. And that just gives us 10%, not too bad. Now what we have to find out is what proportion of their capital is equity and what proportion of it is debt. So all we have to do there is do $4 million in debt divided by $4 million in debt plus $5 million in equity. Now we have to do the exact same thing with equity, which is $5 million in equity divided by $4 million in debt plus $5 million in equity. As you can see, all we're doing here is just taking each portion, the percentile of the total that debt and equity make up. Not too complicated. So we see that debt makes up 44% of their total capital and equity makes up 56% of their total capital. Now we know everything we need to do to fully calculate WAC. So I actually have not given you the exact equation for WAC yet. And that's because I wanted to cover a few of these topics before we did that. But now I think you're ready. You see, WAC is just equal to the cost of equity times the proportion of the capital that equity is, plus the cost of debt times the proportion of debt in the capital structure times the tax shield. The only difference between the equity side and the debt side of the WAC equation is that the debt has that tax shield. Now we talked about the tax shield earlier, kind of using income taxes as an example, and so hopefully you remember that aspect. If you don't, we're gonna go over it one more time as we do this example. So. Let's continue on down this road. We know that our cost of equity was around 9.7%. We calculated that when we did cap M earlier on this entertainment company. And now we know that our proportion of capital that is equity is right around 56%. So all you have to do is calculate 9.7% times 56% and we get 5.4%. That's the half of WAC that is from equity. Now let's do the debt half. The easiest way to do this is to start with the tax shield. Remember, the tax shield is just one minus your tax rate. Our tax rate was 30%. Remember, we found that out and we used that number when we leveraged up a beta when we did cap M. So one minus 30% is 70%. So all we have to do for the debt side of the equation is multiply our 10% in interest payment that we make every year, we calculated that earlier, times the 44% that debt makes up of the capital structure times are 70%. That gives us 3.1%, and that's the debt side of the equation. So now we have those two numbers, we just add them together, and our weighted average cost of capital for our entertainment company is 8.5%. Boom, there you go. So what does this mean? Well, this tells us that in order for us to borrow a dollar, we should expect to pay 8.5% on that dollar. So if I borrowed $100, within one year, I should be prepared to pay that person back, whoever I took the money from, $108.50. Just because as a company, that's how much it costs us to borrow money, or capital. So the weighted average cost of capital just shows you how much money should you expect to pay back someone in the future based off of your company today. Now, for our work, we're gonna use this number as a discount rate. Remember how I talked about using discount rates with NPV and IRR and how sometimes they're made up and sometimes they're given to us by our bosses and sometimes we have to do it ourselves? Well, WAC is how a lot of companies calculate their interest rates so that they can best and most accurately value investment opportunities using NPV and IRR and tools like that. So now that we know how to run with WAC, we have a lot better grasp of how companies actually use this 
and NPV and IRR to make decisions. Now, I know this is a very, very long video. Hopefully you've stuck with us all the way to the end. If you have, you've learned WAC and WAC is invaluable. You see, you also learned a few great tips along the way you probably didn't even realize. You learned that WAC changes throughout time. Changes because of your beta changes. Your industry just may go in and out of favor. The risk-free rate changes. The market return changes. All these kind of things changes. Your debt to equity ratio, that's gonna change too. And what you'll find out later on in these videos is that the more debt you use is usually actually negative when it comes down to calculating WAC. And that means that WAC gets a lot, lot bigger. You see, you want WAC to be low. Low WAC means that people are willing to give you money for less in return, which means that you as the owner get to keep more money yourself. So let's go into the next set of videos and talk a little bit more about how to leverage these ideas that we've worked on today into some real life examples.